Hi, welcome to Flory Models Daily Vlog. Here we're on Monday the 7th of March 2016 and I haven't done anything in here whatsoever. Literally, nothing. <laughs> um, did a little bit of sanding. Okay, I'm lying actually because I did. I'm trying to get this perfect and I waited over it. Came down uh, this morning, tiny little sink marks underneath here. So it's like, yep, okay, get the filler out again. Another coat of filler in there. But you know what it's like. We've got the glasswork installed on this. So actually we're not far off of paint. All these little windows, we're gonna do the PVA trick with that. So we're not too worried. So what we're gonna do uh, a little bit later on, it's reprime this completely and we're good to go. The same way I did the engines. These have been smoothed out now, primed and everything else like that. Those resin engines really are very nice. And then we're gonna be pushing on with that one. Tomorrow we've got Q&A and things like that, but Wednesday for certain I'm then going to be pushing on solely with the Halifax for sort of Wednesday, Thursday and everything else like that, okay? So pushing through. So the first part of this guy will be up with you on Wednesday, okay? And that's going to work our way through, talking obviously extensively about obviously sanding and filling, making sure it's perfect, and then working with the resin and various bits and pieces just like that. Finished this week is the actual Terminator. Now we finished it obviously last week and things like that, but the last part of this is up. So this is part nine, it's up on the site now, and as I say, it's got a long old winded thing in me at the end and showing it in the video format of it going around and all the rest of it. And it has been an absolute gem and a joy to do. We also look at about chipping uh, effect using the wash, really weird way of doing it. Something that I haven't explained before and everything else. And then obviously for the final reveal and the things like that. So what I've actually done is I've made it a free to view video. Okay, it's only about 20 minutes long because it's obviously it's sort of summing up at the end of the build and everything else like that. But if you are an old member, you would you want to see roughly what we do and all the rest of it then obviously you can have a look at this because obviously it's talking about the wash and using it as a chipping technique and as I say I haven't really shown that before so I thought it all sort of sums it up and it rounds it off very nicely and everything else like that but again love this build very very nice to do something a little bit different as you know I like to do something that's a bit different a bit quirky and things like that that definitely fits the build there absolutely fantastic and as I say I'm really sad it's finished now I'd really love to have carried on doing that and it's one of those few kits in the world where I've built it and I'd build another one tomorrow and trust me, after doing F-18 Hornets like that, it was an absolute nightmare. But there we go, that one's to have succeeded and finished now. So with both of those out of the way, we're gonna push through heavily now on the airliner. I've got the decals, are hopefully gonna be next to me in a minute. I'm gonna do sort of live unboxing. If they're not, we're in trouble. Uh, but then we're gonna be pushing on heavily with the Halifax as well, whipping through those quite straightforward builds and all the rest of it. You know, still very in depth and everything else, but by the end of the month, then we'll be pushing on with the other great things we got coming up, which is certainly things like the Osprey and everything else, preparing our way for thanks for all the massive feedback on this one um, and loads of you saying are you going to use the riveting set for it I have got it and in fact I've had it a while um, but I couldn't find it when we were doing the, the thing and I thought if I can't find it perhaps I didn't have it I couldn't remember uh, but anyway I have got it it is here it was under a load of paperwork and everything else so we are going to be having a go with the riveting set for it from these guys okay now this is the um, HGW set we have spoke about them before we've had a look at it we've reviewed them and all the bits and pieces so we've got the harness set in here so now I've got technically three sets of harnesses Never mind. Uh, but we have got the full rev uh, riveting thing is here as well. So that's going to add to that massive pile for the super build in the summer for when we go on the set. Loads of feedback on that and loads of people asking for me to do that said thing. But as I said, I couldn't mention it because I thought if I can't find it and I can't get it for whatever reason, I'm going to be a right muppet. So that's why I didn't mention it. But I found it. So yes, that is going to go with that massive pile for all of that FW190 stuff. And again, if you haven't seen the review, go and have a look. Thanks for all the feedback on it. It was lovely to get it. And in some ways, it sort of inspired me to think about kits in a different way now so perhaps when I do a review uh, especially of slightly older kits when the aftermarket stuff come out is to show you what's available for it because I know a load of you have said it was great to see the aftermarket stuff that goes along with a kit because that way you all go out and buy that as well okay but as I said a lot of the times like what I've got behind me they're newer kits and there's no aftermarket actually out for it to be able to show at the same time so it's nice to be able to go back with that particular review and then upgrade the review, make it a little bit better and show what is available really at the end of the day for it. I don't think we'll be able to do those super reviews all the time, purely because of the cost involved with getting it all in and showing it and everything else like that. But certainly when I'm gonna be doing things like this in the, in the future, I'm gonna show it, okay? And if I think there's a particular kit out there, aftermarket sets for it, then I'll do the same for you and show exactly what you can get to go along with your kit. Uh, gotta say, Ron, if you remember on the live show, Ron had his camera out and was recording all the actual thing that Adam was up to. 
No, not that bit. The bit where he's doing his weathering and actually showing you the proper bit. Because as I said, on the webcam, it's so far away, it's a bit difficult to pick up details. So what we've got back is a link for ROM. And obviously, I've got it down here. If you're watching the video, it'll be below here on the main site. It's going to be then linked uh, in the bottom of the description of the other one. And we'll put it in the forum as well uh, and things like that. So thanks for Ron for doing his camera bit. Great camera on his phone there and uh, giving a different angle from it. And you can see exactly what Adam was up to uh, and showing his pigment technique and everything else like that. Uh, quick shout out, because I promised I would, uh, to Joe from the Malta Modeling Society. I normally don't do them, but Joe has begged me to do it, so I thought I would. So anyway, today, as I say, been very busy with various things in the Kit Buyers Club, uh, and this big box right here, correct, you don't have the blade that far out, should be some of your great kits. So I like doing this, because it's not technically any of mine. All right, so we've had a delivery in. Oh my God, it's all... All right, I'm going to have to put it down because I thought it was going to be like cardboard or something and it's shredded paper in here. So it's going to be like a, you know, yeah, lucky dip. Great, yeah, thanks for this. So in here, in one, we have, oh, we have, what do we have? We have oh, one of these. Okay, this is for the Kit Buyers Club, so I can't actually review it because it's not mine, okay? But we've got, actually got there the M... Um, 901 launching site uh, with the MPQ 53 radar set and all the rest of it. Okay, can't get hold of the truck for it for love nor money. That's the only trouble. Okay, but that is the trumpeter kit of 01022. Okay, so that one's in. That will be going out tomorrow or Wednesday, I should say. We've also got in here quite a few of. Here we go. One. They've all come in. <laughs> Two. You can come in. Oh, hold on. That stuff we're going to need. So that's handy. Uh, how many of these have we got? I can't remember how many we've got now. Okay. Three. I'm a bit lost in all of this. So we've got three Shackletons. Okay. So we've actually got two available if somebody wants one. One's for me. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, we've got the Tornado. So we've done this kit already before, but we've got another one down there. To be honest, we've got another one in here. Okay, we've also got the uh, Zvezda, uh, or the Star uh, MiG-29. This is the new one. This is the uh, 9-13 model. Apparently, it's supposed to be an absolute stunning kit. So that is up for review. And we've also got down here the AMX 13, okay, which I'm going to review on Friday. We've got two of these in here. One is actually for me. It's a little French tank, um, and I thought actually it'd make quite a nice review. So we have got the Shackletons in, thank God, because I was desperate to review that uh, this week. Uh -huh. I'll find somewhere to put this. Stick that over there. Uh, so that little lot's in. So I must admit, the Tornado is just another one, but that is the one I have been after, to be honest, since I saw it at Telford. Don't get me wrong, the FX1 is nice, but the surface detail on this lives up to its name. It was always known as like a million rivets flying in close formation. And the thing is I found was that the FX1 just didn't emphasize that enough. This one does seem to do it. Now it could be because I've only seen this, that, you know, this isn't the better color scheme. I think the gray and instead of being in the white. Uh, and also this is um, what we call the Mark II, which has the bulbous bit underneath for the radar. I just love the look of it. It, it to, to me, a Shackleton has that underneath it. It's probably my age, my genre with it, but I always remember them with that underneath there, so it's great. It looked absolutely fantastic. Now, as I said, I haven't built it. I can't say anything like that, but from that point of view, I just love it. It's counter-rotating props on this thing uh, and all the rest of it. So there's some very nice features with this model, um, and just generally the way it is and it's scaling and everything else leans me to want to build this. We're doing the Halifax, which is obviously quite a similar scale to this. In fact, quite similar in design it is that sort of you know twin tail system on it but this is definitely one I'm going to be doing in the future my own personal collection I'd love to do it it's one of those things I was fortunate to see these things fly at the end of their career from down in uh, St Morgan and things like that but um, you know I'd love to see one flying again if we ever do okay what else have we got down here we have this is for that which is quite handy for the Halifax it's turned up at long last it has been on order for a while uh, but what we've got down here this is the 
colour cockpit set for it. It's a lot of glass in the Halifax, and I think it'd be the first time I've done a World War II bomber with a colour photo etch set. I'm just thinking, with all that glass, it'd be a shame to hide it. You are going to be able to see in there, so we've done that. And it's also got the photo etch bits and pieces on the back as well, so that's dead handy. Okay, and also, this is the scheme that is going to be in, okay, which is really, really handy. This is what we were talking about, and hopefully you can see it on camera. It's got the light blue with the dark blue on it, uh, and the way it is, so it's gonna be a lot of masking up on this guy to turn it into this, but I think it'll be well worth it. Okay, I think it's gonna be a nice way of actually doing it, and thank God it's got the GE engines on it, because that was my only worry. We've done the GE engines for it, General Electric engines, and I think it's got the Rolls Royce on it, we're really in the brown. Okay, but these are Skyline decals. I've used them once before in the past, they really are nice. The other thing this has got is a little bit of photo etch with it as well, which is, I have got in resin form. So a little bit of a crossover, but as I said, this kit's got a few little crossovers at the best of time, but it's quite nice. It does come with a little photo etch fret. So for instance, this guy down in here, which is very nice, technically these are for down here, the little strakes underneath, that'll be a lot nicer to use than actually the plastic ones, that's why I haven't put them on yet. Uh, but generally, it does look very nice. We have got colour callouts for it, which is quite interesting because it's actually giving out the colours in Federal Standard, Revel colours, okay, and uh, the uh, extra colour as well. So um, something for us to follow and have a look at. But so I'll have a good look at those later. Is the first, literally I've just opened the box and away we go. We have got a few other bits and pieces down in there as well, but we'll go through those at a later date. They were two were the important ones because I needed them to start off. And to be honest, that's why we haven't started the Halifax yet. I was waiting on that. So I'm glad that has come in. That goes with that pile. This one will stay here and we'll make our way through like that. The other thing, some of you might have noticed, I've been playing with the live broadcast. I know I say I never do it because live broadcast drives me mad because there's always a fault, an error or something going on. Uh, we're trying a different coding system and everything else, so hopefully we can be a bit more professional with it uh, because I want to allow multi-cameras. If this comes off, it'd be a miracle. But the idea being is we're gonna have a sort of multi-camera setup uh, so we can show what's going on on the desk. We'll be able to play videos to you uh, and other little bits and pieces like that. Also, we can stream then seamlessly to sort of other people and things like that can come into the stream uh, and all those things. So I'm actually playing with, uh, was it X Twitch or whatever it's called? Uh, Xtreme, sorry, uh, and doing it that way. But I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. So tomorrow's q and I might try it. I'm not saying I will, but I might try and do it live, do the Q&A thing during the afternoon or early evening, something else like that, and we can actually see if I can get it to work. But in theory, everything looks like it should be a lot better. We can up the up rates and the various bits and pieces and everything else like that. Um, so I'm hoping it should get rid of a few of our little errors and problems that sometimes we get and things like that. Anyway, that's it for me today. If you are interested in the Shackleton and the guys from the Kit Buyers Club, let us know because I have got two free, well, spare, shall we say, as in not free, uh, but obviously you'll get the usual 30% off uh, the list price on those kits as well uh, and everything else. Um, and as I say, you've got some great reviews now and I must admit, I'm dying to review that. So you might get a review earlier than Thursday or it might wait till Thursday. Never mind. There we go. Happy modeling. Take care. Catch you all tomorrow.